Hi, um, welcome to uh, the, the super long title of It Is How You Say It, Ethics and Etiquette for Photographers and Assistants um, at the B&H Event Space. And I'd like to thank B&H and the Event Space and Deb, Deb Gilbert, uh, for hosting this and uh, and all of you for coming. So th this was an ASMP thing. For those of, that you, uh, for those of you that don't know uh, ASMP, it's the American Society of Media Photographers. Uh, I'm now on the national board, but when this stuff, when this came about, when this little lecture came about, it was um, in response to something that actually happened here in the New York chapter, and I was the chapter president. And we tried to be positive. You know, the Mother Teresa thing, she'll never go to a, an anti-war protest. She will only go to a pro-peace uh, thing. So we were trying to be positive. The original name, however, was uh, DBAD, D-B-A-D, which is don't be a dingus, I believe we tried to come up with. And we, then we said, let's not be negative, OK? So, um, so it's really about common sense. and most of you know this stuff. Most of you uh, probably don't even need to be here. However, it's always good to hear it, and some of us really do need it. Um, so uh, how did this start? So it all started with a fish. So if you saw the thing online for what the graphic was, although there were, there were two graphics, actually. So one was just a pencil that was an estimating thing. Um, and I'm going to touch on this later. But the reason this is the fish that you see and not an actual photograph of a fish well, there's a few reasons. One is I'm a vegetarian, so since I don't eat fish, I didn't have any fish to photograph. Um, but the other is I didn't want to steal a picture online and just find a fish and use it, because that's what we're talking about here, not stealing, using things that you, so if you don't have the graphic and you can't find it for free and you don't have a friend that shoots the stuff that you can borrow, draw it. OK. So. Um, a lot of this is just about being polite. Um, a lot of photographers and a lot of business people just forget it. They forget to be polite. Um, and if, if you can be a little more polite, you will probably get more gigs. It's, it's kind of you know simple. So uh, the, one of the first things is uh, our please and thank you dead. So I used to go shopping in the clerks would be, oh, thank you, you know, thank you, thank you, have a nice day, thank you, have a nice day. Um, and I don't do that now at my local supermarket, which was until recently a wall bombs. Um, because when I say thank you, when they hand me the bag or money or whatever, and I say thank you, they say you're welcome. And I'm like, they never say thank you. They never thank me for their business. If I go to the gas station, that's a little further away, that the, or the, the coffee shop that's attached to the gas station. And there's a guy there who's not as young and not from this country. He thanks me five or six times. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe a little too much. Um, but I appreciate you know, like the thank you for your business. If I go to my local bank, I don't get that. I go, they, I, get, I will not say thank you. And then they will say, my pleasure. <laughs> really? <laughs> so anyway, um, I don't think that please and thank you are dead. And there are some people that, um, there's a consultant actually, that thinks if you thank someone, if you bring your book to a creative who might hire you, and you say thank you, she thinks that gives them the upper hand and that you shouldn't say thank you. I disagree. I say give out thank yous like they're Halloween candy and <clears throat> Just say thanks, and in fact, thank all of you. I thank all of you for coming. Um, it, it, no, it doesn't hurt anybody. I don't think it gives anybody the upper hand. Showing appreciation, I think, kind of gives them a reciprocal debt rather than saying, "Oh, now they have the upper hand." You thank them to, for looking at your book. At your book, um, but uh, it won't hurt people. So, um, so anyway, it's it's a little bit. Um, actually, it's a lot like dating. Right, doing business and and marketing and marketing to people that you want to hire you is like dating. So if it's something that's creepy or bad etiquette or bad manners to do while dating, don't do it with your business people. Don't make calls that are just business calls. I mean, we get them, right? You, everybody gets calls that you wouldn't. They don't sound like they're friendly or like someone who would. You know, be courting you or something. They they are just business calls. You know, you've won whatever. Um, anyway, uh, okay. So let's. Okay, so um, so that's okay. So it's why we're talking about it. It's all common sense, D bad. Um, so imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So that goes back to the fish. Um, so. Uh, 
actually, it's great. If you see someone's picture and you say, how did they do that? I want to learn to do that. I want to take a picture of that fish just the way they took it. And uh, I'll, I'll actually tell you the story now. It's actually, it's later in my notes, but I'll, I'll get to it now. Um, what happened that spurred this whole thing was it was a, an informal meeting. Um, a brand new member had just come to this event, his very first event, and he met some other photographer who was also a pretty new member and showed him his, his pictures, and it was a fish. And the, um, the photographer who had, who had been a member a little longer said, oh, that's great, how did you like that? Oh, wow, wow. And what, did, what else did you do? And, and the guy shared, you know, because we were all about sharing. And then the guy who had asked about it went home, shot almost exactly the same thing, put them up on his website, and then emailed the other guy and said, hey, look at my stuff now, you know, look what I did. And it's like, you know what, if you want to learn and imitate or whatever, that's, we all, everybody does it in schools, I tell my students, please, you know, let's look at this lighting, let's figure out this lighting, let's imitate it. But putting it in your book is, you know, going a little, little far or certainly putting it on the web. So the, I'm going to give the, I'm going to tell you exactly what this photographer said. This was in a sales class. Um, and uh, what she said was, well, I have a unique photographic vision. I deliver quality images, good service, and, and went on. And, and then he went to the, the sales teacher, went to the next person and said, do you have, um, do you deliver a quality product? Do you deliver good service? Do you have a unique photographic vision? You? And it, yeah? Okay, everybody, right? So what are you selling? Right? You're selling you. So your thing is yes. So you are really selling you because unless you are, and God bless you if you are, if you're wanted for the one unique thing that you do and nobody else does or you're known for doing and nobody else is known for doing that, then God bless you. You can, you know, be kind of a jerk. But at least you could be a slightly more polite jerk. Um, but really, if you're selling yourself, then what you actually said is listening. So, um, so, and, and when we we went around the room, everybody had the same thing. So, what you're selling is you. If you can do the same thing that you can do, and you can do, and you can do, and you know everybody can do, then basically, it's who do I want to have lunch with? And sometimes, it certainly when money was big bigger or whatever, it was whose studio do I like to hang out with, who has the pool table, who has Wi-Fi, whatever. But if everybody can shoot the same thing and you're all in the same price range, and nobody want, really wants to be competing on price, but if you're all in the same price range and all doing the same thing, then it's who do I want to hang out with. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, Okay, and here, so we're at, you are special just like everyone else. You've all heard that. <laughs> so really, you, you know, yes, you are all special and unique, but we can all, we can all shoot that paper cup or whatever that thing is, right? Um, so we mentioned it is a little bit, no, a lot like dating. Um, so here, here's another thing. Um, everybody knows what a mensch is? Okay, so be the mensch. Um, should there be another letter in there? Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong place to misspell that. Um, okay. So, uh, do, who's read any uh, Malcolm Gladwell uh, books? So, the, which was the one that he talked about connectors and? Is that it, it might be been outliers anyway, but he mentions that every, everybody likes to connect people. If you go networking, like, it has who's gone to a networking event? Okay, so a bunch of you. Um, so if you go to a networking event and and you meet somebody who's just trying to sell their service, it's a turnoff, right? You just you're like, okay, whatever. Yeah, I, I can find that anywhere. What you're looking for at a networking event is somebody to help you, someone to make connections for you. So be that person when you know that somebody's looking, even even as an assistant. And and how many of you assist or want to assist? Okay. Um, all right. So if you're an assistant, you know when you you are not you are not going to be available every day. You're going to be available some days, but there's going to be days you're booked. And a photographer calls you up, instead of just saying no, I'm not available, be the person that they look to to say, hey, oh, well, who else do you know? Um, and it's one of the best resources for getting gigs as an assistant. Um, so okay. Um, I actually should go back into this copying thing for a second. Okay, um, so there, there was. I'm, I'm going back before being a mensch. Sorry. Um, back to okay. 
you know what, I'll come back to this, I'm sorry. I will go back to that other thing. Okay, so be a mensch, um, and is the customer always right? Uh, rem somebody remind me when, this, when we get close to the end, if I haven't gone back to the fish thing, to go back? Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, is the customer always right? Yes. In reality? <laughs> so no, so yes and no, right? Um, so it's, it's how much is your reputation worth? Um, I have a friend who had a very b bad client, um, and who knows what the person's problem was, but they said that they didn't get the images delivered. And um, we know with technology, she knew that they downloaded the images before the date that they were promised. But she said, I didn't do that. And then she started posting on Facebook or Twitter or whatever and giving bad reviews. In a, how much is that reputation worth, worth? And my friend came to me and said, what should I do? I'm in the right. Let it go. Just let it go. Give her money back. Thank God you never have to see her again. <laughs> and, and walk away. Because your, your reputation is the biggest thing you have. It's worth a lot. And yeah, you're going to have that one bad customer. You're going to have somebody. Um, and it, it's different when it's a corporation or something, and then you can you know, usually negotiate. There's not, it, it's not a personal thing. They probably aren't going to badmouth you on social media. But especially if you shoot anything private, if you shoot portraits or weddings or, or anything private, sometimes it's worth it to just give them the money back and walk away. Yeah, yeah. You, there'll be other clients. If you get into a fight with them on social media, there might not be as many clients in the future. All right. Um, OK. So do what you promise. Go directly to the lab. Do not pass go. Um, so if you say you're going to deliver images by tomorrow, of course, if you get hit by a train, if something happens, then don't, you know, you, 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 you probably have a good excuse. Um, I'm actually going to tell you a, a famous story. So uh, back when there were labs, uh, <laughs> but back when labs were the places you had to go immediately after the job, not, not for art photography or something you need next week or tomorrow, but three hours later, right? Um, so a, uh, a famous story is that an assistant on his way home uh, or on his way to the lab, where he the last see, the last time he was going to see that photographer was uh, uh, you know buy see it take the film to the lab, and he stopped at his girlfriend's house, uh, got high, and made it to the lab you know in the middle of the night or whatever. And yeah, the photographer got them the next day, but when the photographer called that night, where are my pictures? Oh no, you have no film here. Don't do that. <laughs> so, so be responsible, um, and do what you promise. Okay, um, so uh, is it worth the fight? Um, so uh, actually, I'm gonna. All, the, all of these are, are actually combined. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you guys know who uh, Sri Chimnoy is. So he was the uh, leader of a group, a somewhat religious group, or whatever that, that would that runs, and they still run. They're in blue shirts and all the marathons. And they have some great restaurants in Queens. Um, but his sugar packets used to have his sayings on them. And this was actually a favorite of mine, the past is dust. So um, back when I was leading this, this group in the local chapter, uh, some people would want to get on a, a long you know, thing, a, a long drawn out thing of, oh, but this happened. Oh, but this happened. Oh, but this happened. And boo hoo. Um, and, I haven't watched The West Wing, but I did, uh, I've seen the clip. Uh, Charlie Sheen, as president, would have people come up and say, hey, this happened or whatever. And, and his line would be, OK, what now? Don't just come to me with a problem. Come to me with a solution, right? So really, it's crying over spilt milk. If something is already hap has already happened, the past is dust, let's move on. How, what can we make of this now? And um, even if someone steals your image. And there are some companies out there that are doing this as a regular thing. Uh, and they would rather just pay you when you find them than pay everybody and try to find whose images they are. They'll just use them. And then you say, hey, that's my image. And they'll say, oh, well, what do we owe you? Uh, not the best way to go about business. Um, and some people are happy with that. And, um, but here's the thing, if, if somebody, if they should have known better, that's, yeah, you may, may want to 
have that corrected, especially if they're these huge conglomerates. Um, and I don't know if you guys know the story. It was in PDN a long time ago, but um, we're kind of back to the fish thing now. Uh, but there was a photographer who uh, had her images in one of the big stock agencies, and they decided not to use her anymore or not to use those images. They had somebody else copy those images, and then they were selling those. So it wasn't just a matter of copying. It was, it was also a bad client thing. You know, she was their artist. They got somebody else to copy, and it went to uh, court, and the judge ruled that she didn't get any money, and it, it kind of you know, put a big damper on her business for a while, actually. But um, if you looked at the images, they were copied. They were, this, this, somebody went there and looked at, you know, that's my opinion. But if you, you can go research PDN about 18 years ago, and uh, you can see what the images were. And, um, but if, I have a, a friend who shoots headshots. And all of a sudden, he sees his headshot on a package of hair or something. And his haircut's like mine, so he wasn't going to get a lot of free product. It wasn't going to help him. Um, but he saw his, his, one of the actors that he shot on this product bottle. And he called them up. And they didn't have much money. They, they were like, oh, we're really sorry. But they got the image from the actor who thought, oh, it's my image. I can do whatever I want with it, which obviously was not the case. Um, but he got some compensation from them as if he had done the job, and he walked away. He didn't sue them, he didn't go after them and try to destroy them, because what was gonna come of it if he did? Yeah, okay, so um, let's see. Yeah, um, part of it is being reasonable. I, I actually used to get a lot of calls. What should I do? Somebody's using my image. I don't know, give them a call. Give them a call like a normal person, be reasonable, be polite, and see, and you know, maybe they didn't know that they were stealing your image. Okay. <laughs> so can it still be a win-win? What if that client can hire you? Maybe it's, maybe it's your next client for the next five years. They like your image enough to steal it. They might be hiring you for however many years. It can't always be a win-win. But if it can, great. Okay. So um, once in a while you're on a job and somebody says, hey, can you make this? <laughs> can you? Here's a picture. Can you make this picture? And if you're the assistant, what can you say? Sorry. Last the photographer. <laughs> well, no, no. If they're if you're on the gig and they're they're talking to the photographer and you see that you're imitating exactly some other picture, as the assistant, you really can't say anything. So, uh, what can you say as the photographer? So somebody comes up to you and says, "Hey, can you make this image?" Except with our people. Just say no, okay, you could just say no. You can walk away and maybe it's not that important of a client or whatever. Um, what I say is, and it's happened, I've had somebody come up and say, hey, can you make, we, we love this image, but we just need it to be not this person, we need it to be one of our people. And uh, the, the answer for me is, do you want to exactly copy that image, which you know is a little plagiarism and might be copyright infringement, and you know, uh, or, do, or do you want us to work in the spirit of that and you know give have that as inspiration? And no one's ever said no. Once I've said that, they've never said no. However, as an assistant, I was on a shoot where it was a lifestyle shoot and. The client was there going, oh, no, no, the kids have to tilt their head this way because they wanted to copy that exact image. What can you say as the assistant except something to the photographer, which, you know, at that point, it didn't make any difference, uh, pretty much nothing. But as the photographer, you can, you can say, hey, do you want to copy or do you want to be inspired by that? Okay. So um, communication. So uh, we've all talked about listening. Uh, we all, all have heard what does it mean to be a good listener, and does it mean that you don't talk? No, it just means that you don't get ready to talk before you listen. The little pauses that we're always so afraid of don't really seem like that big a deal when you're in a real conversation. Yeah, so make it, having the right question to reply uh, to someone's statement. Um, but we all like to talk about ourselves. Um, so, okay, I'm way back on my notes. Okay. Um, but yeah, so uh, here's, here's another thing. So yes, be a good listener, communication, and communication with 
written things, with emails, with phone calls. I wish more people would pick up the phone and call. That may not be a thing of the future, um, but we all wish for that. Um, so OK, so how do you treat the waiter? So again, back to like dating. So if, you, if you're on a date, they treat you great. Everybody, they're, they're so lovely to you. They're a great listener. But they treat the waiter crappy, it's a sign. And nobody wants to see that. So if you're the photographer, what does the client want to see? They want to see you treat everybody good. Right? If you're crappy to your assistants, you're not going to have a great rapport. They're not going to appreciate that. Um, and also, you never know who you're meeting. So you're on the train. The person next to you starts talking to you. You don't know who they are. You don't know who their mother is, who their son is, who their brother, sister, grandfather, great granddaughter, whoever. Might be the person that can give you tons and tons of work. Um, so uh, be considerate. So if you put yourself in someone else's shoes, you can figure out, you know, would you want to be treated that way? Uh, I worked for one guy who, you know, he, he would say this over and over. And he was the photographer. I was assisting him. Um, and he'd say, you know, you know as, as an assistant, ask me to clean the toilet. Just ask me nicely. So it is how you say it, back to our title. Um, it's, it's not, no one's ever worried about what the job is. You know, if, if cleaning the toilet is the job, nobody's going to be like, oh, god, I can't do that. But if it's, hey, go clean the toilet, versus, hey, do me a favor, please go clean the toilet. Um, I had two bosses that basically did the same thing and had the same results. Um, but uh, this was photography backgrounds and equipment or whatever. But we would have to take things home. And there were a bunch of photographers. And um, I got the call from each of them at different times. You know, hey, um, you, know, you have this background. Somebody else needs this. Can you go get it? And one of them will call and say, hey, you know what? You ha I think you have this background. Can you check? You know, uh, can you please you know, do us a favor and bring that early in the morning, you know, 6 AM or 5 AM? Can you bring that to so-and-so who needs it, um, you know, whatever, and, and would ask you a favor? And then you're driving there going, well, I'm doing them a favor. It's 4.30 in the morning, but I'm doing them a favor, right? The other one. And we weren't getting paid a lot of money. The other one would say, you did this thing. You have to do this. This, is. And you're driving there going, I don't make enough money to be doing this. You know. <laughs> so it is how you say it. You can ask the same exact thing, have the same result. And probably they were right. And I might have made the mistake. Maybe I took something I, that for two days ahead that I didn't take on purpose, or, or I took it on purpose, but I didn't consider someone else. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if I was right. The person saying it nicely got me to drive at 4:30 in the morning, going, "No, oh, I feel good. I'm doing a favor." All right. So, um, so oh, no matter what you were in the middle of. So I have seen a, uh, a lighting expert um, get, you know, the photographer up on a ladder saying, "Hey, you know," and him on the phone going, <laughs> "So." Not only is it, you know, it's the photographer, you're supposed to just drop what you're doing and listen to them, uh, but it's just, you know what, no matter what you're in the middle of, don't be a dingus. Um, and if you act like one, you are one. Uh, I don't even really need to go further into that one. <laughs> it's, so it's not, it's, you know, it's not, oh, I was acting like one because there's no excuse. If you are a jerk to someone, then you're a jerk. <laughs> Don't be a jerk. All right. All right. So this is a little marketing thing. Um, anybody guess what this is? Slide. It's a slide. Is it anything else? Right. Pretty dark, right? Yeah. Well, this is a scan of it with reflective light. You can actually see into it a little bit. But what it is is somebody's business card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was an assistant's business card. They gave this to me. I've never read it. I, I've never called that assistant. I've never looked up what the phone number was or done anything else, because why, why are they making me work hard? Don't make me work hard. Don't make anybody work hard. These are your clients. If you go to my website, my phone number and my, and my email are on every page. If you get an email from me, my full email signature, including the email that I'm sending it from, is on my email signature. 
don't make someone work hard. Even, you know, yes, I don't really need to send you my email in my email signature, but it just makes life easier for you. You don't have to go somewhere else. It's with all the other information. If I go to your website, and this was really popular, and I'm, I'm glad it's not anymore, but it's still a thing. If I go to your website and I have to follow something around, or I can't find what the pages are clearly, if there's something hidden or I don't know what to click on, you made me feel stupid. I'm not hiring you. <laughs> don't make me feel stupid. Don't make your clients feel stupid. Make it easy. Make it easy. Make it so that any kid could do it. All right. So yeah, and don't give people cards that aren't cards. Um, in fact, okay, on, on the card thing. Um, so whoever uh, the producer is or whatever that made, so who remembers CDs as albums, right? Okay, so Ikea made a rack that fit all your CDs and they're all the same size. Except some artists are like, no, no, I'm gonna make a twice the size CD that doesn't fit in anything. <coughs> really? Now where am I supposed, now I have to put that somewhere special, not with my other CDs that I bought the rack for? Standard size. So if you're making business cards, and I, I know there's a popular brand out there that makes them bigger. I hate the big card. It doesn't fit with my other cards. It doesn't fit in my wallet. Standard size business cards that I can write on if I need to write on with a pen. Those are the cards that everybody should have. And if you're an assistant, have all your information on the card. And it doesn't need a website. I don't even need your website. If you're an assistant and you're making assistant cards, and you should have them. If you're an assistant and you give me a card that says photographer, great. I met you. Oh, there's my photographer card. Oh, they were really, they were a nice guy. They were a nice girl. You know, do I ever, does it ever make it to the assistance list? No, because it's two weeks ago. And I don't remember that you said you were an assistant. If you want to assist photographers, have a separate card that says photography assistant. So it should have the words photography assistant, should have your phone number, your email, um, and your name. That's all that's needed. I don't need a website because I'm not gonna go there and look at it. I expect all the same things. Just like every photographer can shoot that cup that we talked about, every assistant should be there on time, should be responsible, should know what they're doing. And, and if you're a new assistant and you say, hey, I don't know that much about strobe lighting, that, that's fine. But I expect you to still be there on time, be ready to carry equipment, and all the other stuff that I expect. Um, but you're, if your photography card, or if your photographer assistant or photographer card doesn't have a phone number on it, I'm never calling, never. I'm not gonna go to your website and fill out a form email that, that you now have to get back to me, especially when I'm putting a job together and I need, to, I need you the next day. Or even four days from now, this is the time that I set aside to make that plan for two weeks from now. So if you're a makeup artist, photographer, um, assistant, hairstylist, uh, any, anybody who's gonna be part of that team, when the producer, who's ever producing that shoot calls you and says, hey, you know, are you available next Thursday? They need an answer now. They need to get to your phone number. That's why my phone number is on every page. And I've had um, some, some people say, oh, I don't like giving out my phone number. I've had a stalker or I've had, you know, whatever. then get an answering service. Get a friend to answer your phone for you. Um, get somebody to do it or get, a, get another phone. Get a Google voice number. That's free. But I need to be able to call you. All right. Okay, uh, so actually that's all the same stuff. Um, oh yeah, so if you call somebody, please leave your number twice. That little breakup that, that I just didn't hear that that was a one. So if you say your name, say the, say the phone number twice, even if you called from that number, because maybe my caller ID didn't work or whatever happened, please leave your number twice. Um, so don't text a stranger. So if you're hiring me, if you're calling me up for some photo job, by all means, text me, call me, do whatever you, in fact, I'd rather the, the call. Second, I'd rather the text. I've had people email me that day and say, hey, can you shoot this tonight? No, like I got the email tonight. I, sorry, I'm too late. Don't email me if it's an emergency. So if you're hiring me, feel free to text or call. If you're looking for work for me as an assistant or I'm looking for work from a creative as a photographer or you're looking as, as, as for work as a photographer, don't text. Um, this has only happened once or twice to me, but I'm never hiring that assistant. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you texted me? All right, oh, well, here's the thing. So, so we're talking about age, and, and if, if you text people you know, is it more casual? Because um, we have to repeat everything for the. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. Um, so 
here's the thing. If, if, you text, if you text me and you don't know me, you're calling me for work and, and you're, you want work from me and you text me, it's spam. Don't spam me. If, you know, email, fine. Email me, send me something in the mail, even call, but calling still, you should email and then say, hey, let's have a meeting or something. If you're texting, I don't know any photographers that want to get texted by people they don't know. Yeah, I know any photographers over 40. <laughs> Sorry? I know a lot of photographers that are 20 and, and younger. I teach. And, and, and they, text the they, they text each other that they know. Once, you, once I know you, it's fine. You can text me. But if you don't know me and you want to assist me, don't text me. I, I, if I texted even my students, I would never text them without them, you know, with, without saying, hey, text me later or something. It's, it's, it, I only I text my friends. It's immediate. It's interrupting me. And it's fine if you text me all the time once you know me. But if you don't know me and it's spam, then, then it's spam. And I'm, I don't know. And pl there's plenty of photographers out there of all ages that are not going to hire somebody that texts them once they get that spam. Um, OK. So uh, back to communication, listen, pause, and practice. Actually, we should, OK. So if you're not good at meeting with people, showing your book to people, talking about your work, get yourself some friends and practice talking to them. Practice showing them your book. Practice selling to them. It's pretty easy. You can sit down and say, hey, you know what? If, if you were a creative, Instead of me being nervous, because only I only get to see a creative once every few weeks, let's practice this. Let's do this over and over again until I can actually have this conversation. All right. OK, so making phone calls. Um, please identify yourself. Uh, I know we often don't do this, and we get calls. Hi, is Frank there? <laughs> who's calling? I shouldn't have to ask who's calling. <laughs> The person on the other line should say, "Hi, this is uh, hi. You know, hi. This is Fra I'm Frank Rocco. I'm a photographer. This is the reason I'm calling. Can I speak to whoever? Right? Not is this whoever? Is this Mary? No. If, if I call you, I should say, this is Frank Rocco. Um, I'm a photographer. I'm calling because I'd like to come and show somebody my portfolio. I'm trying to reach Mary. You know, whatever. And I think first names are fine, but you know that that's uh, everybody's own own thing. Oh, and don't hang up." So we all watch TV shows, and we see them all just hang. They, especially um, one thing I noticed on six feet under, six feet under. The oh hi yes yeah okay uh, yes I'll be there. Click. They don't say goodbye. But that's a time. That's a TV thing because they only have forty minutes or fifty minutes or whatever to do that hour show, and you know, and 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 they there's no reason for them to sit there on TV and say okay bye okay bye you know. But again, it's back to dating. Who remembers dating when you were, you know, 15 or whatever? No, you say bye. Oh, no, no, you hang up. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up, right? <laughs> That's the way it should be. So I, I had a friend that actually would do that. And I always felt like he was hanging up on me. We'd, we'd talk about, he was another photographer, but we'd talk about business stuff or whatever. And um, we'd, we'd finish. It was clear that it finished. And all of a sudden, I hear click. And I was like, oh, wait, uh, now I'm left. Why is he hanging up on me? So my advice to him was he should never ever be the one to hang up first. He should wait there and say, OK, bye. OK, see ya. Listen for that click. If he doesn't hear the click, make sure there's enough of a pause and be like, OK, hang it up. Because nobody wants to feel like they got hung up on. Nobody wants to feel you know, like, hey, you know, I'll, uh, click. Oh, wait. <laughs> so this is one of those common sense things, I think. But if it wasn't said, at least to my one friend, uh, he might not have known it. So uh, if you're an assistant on a gig, who should you talk to? Mostly the photographer, right? Now, should you talk to the client? OK, so I'm getting nods, oh, you're shaking it. So unless if, if they talk to you, you, of course, you can talk to them, right? But um, you should actually go up to the photographer. Please save the day. Please go up and tell the photographer, hey, you know, there's a, something's not working, or whatever the, the thing is. Or, you know, the, the client has a, you know, big snot hanging out of them, whatever it is. Um, tell the photographer, you know, and, and it, whatever, you know, the, if the model has something, whatever, then talk to the stylist or whatever. You can talk to other people on the set, but um, you shouldn't be going right up to the client, and you certainly, 
um, shouldn't have, and I've seen this, uh, your work on your computer, on your laptop, open at the shoot if you're the assistant, right? We're at common sense. But if you're the assistant, you shouldn't be trying to steal that photographer's work. You shouldn't be like, oh, here, look at my work, you know, whatever, unless you're asked. If somebody's like, hey, let me see, you know, what's your Instagram or whatever, fine. But if you have your tablet, whatever, you know, even your phone open to your stuff and, you know, oh, oh I'm just happened to be, yeah, that's, you know, you're not getting hired again. Um, so um, when is it okay for you to work with the same client who your photographer has been working for? <laughs> so be best case situation is when that photographer calls you and says, hey, I can't, I, this job is too small for me, I can't handle that job, it's, it, it's too much in a week, or whatever it is, and they call you and say, hey, you want to take that gig. But I know photographers that um, won't hire assistants in their same field, so if they shoot fashion, they won't hire fashion photographers as assistants, and vice versa, There's even assistants that won't work in their same fields. This also, they don't want to be known as the, you know, the assistant. They want to, that's, you know, so they, they will work for um, photographers that shoot different things. All right. Um, so how do you know what you're doing is not cool? So when is it cheating? So let's go back to relationships. When is it cheating on your wife or husband? It's cheating if you have to lie about it. <laughs> anything goes if, if anything goes if it's if you can talk, you know if you, whatever your agreement is if you can tell your partner hey I'm doing this then that's fine. But some people think that looking at another man or woman is cheating. Some people think that looking at things on the internet is cheating. If you have to lie about it, then it's cheating, right? So um, how do you know what you're doing is not cool? So I have a friend who's a photographer who's always asking, um, you know, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I? If you don't know, if you don't intuitively know, then ask. Ask a friend. You know, if, if you, if, if you if, and just stop and think, but certainly feel free to ask. If you say, hey, you know what, I had this client, should I do this thing? Should, should I, should I, is it okay to call them? Is it, you know, it's, it's been a week. They haven't gotten back to me. Is it, is it okay to call? And again, it's like dating. Don't be scary and creepy. And we actually have that. Um, so how do you treat your assistants? So back to that. Um, okay. Uh, so it's back to, you know, if, if you, Treat your assistants like you would like to be treated. Um, there was a photographer who I worked for for five days, and he asked me to come at exactly 9 a.m. Okay, and, I, and then after the first day, I realized that my, where, where, the way my, tra my trains worked, I would, could either be there at 9.05, or I could be about a half hour early. And I asked him about it, and he said, no, no, come at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. so. He, now, this is back in film days, so I picked up some chromes at the lab, which was not that near to his studio, but being that I wanted to get there at exactly nine, I couldn't hang out at the lab and wait. I went to the studio and I went around the area. And even though I had what was supposed to be the best um, cell service at the time in New York City, Verizon, uh, I didn't get any of his calls. And he called and called and called and called because he called the lab about 8.30 and was looking for his chromes. I already had them. I was waiting outside his lab. I was hanging out, it was a beautiful sunny day, but I didn't get any of his calls, so I got in. Now, whose fault is it? I don't know, you know, I mean, he told me, don't come before nine, and he told me to pick up his chromes, but it was bad communication. Any normal situation would have been like, oh, you know what, okay, you know, uh, tomorrow I'm gonna get up early, don't, don't pick them up, or whatever, but it shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have been what it is, and, and what it is is something that I will always remember. The same guy, he's not a bad guy. He's environmentally friendly, he's um, nice if you meet him, he's, he's not a bad guy. But I remember this like it's yesterday. Um, so I walk in with his chromes, and he's like, where were you? I tried calling you, I said, here's my phone, I didn't get any calls. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here at nine, just like you asked. And uh, he said, well, you know, where were you? I was, I was calling the lab trying to get them, you know, and I said, you told me not to come before nine. And he mimicked me and said, you didn't tell me not to come before nine. Like, really? Holy. Not professional, not professional, and something that stuck in my mind for almost 20 years. <laughs> All right. Um, 
So yeah, so it only takes one experience to negate all the good ones. No matter how nice of a guy this guy is, and how environmentally friendly, and all this other stuff, I just remember him doing that. All right. So being open and honest, has anybody ever seen this? The uh, Johari Square? Yes. So um, this is what you know and everybody else knows. This is what other people know that you can't see. This is what you hide from others, and this is what's totally unknown to you and others. The more you move these two lines, the smaller this gets. The more open and free you are, the, more, the, the less of a blind spot you'll have, and the, less, and the more other people will also know about you. So you can move this line either way, actually, and you can move this line either way. Um, being open and honest is fairly easy. It's not, you know, it, it's not a tough thing. There's, there's no great secret, and, and it goes with everything. And it goes with photography stuff. It goes with business stuff. Nobody's got some great secret that nobody that you can't share. Um, the, and especially with like photography stuff, I remember guys that used to talk, oh, cross processing. No, yeah, I can't share that secret. Like, really, you know, whatever your secret is, somebody can figure it out. It's not, it's not top secret. Um, so please. Uh, try to be open and honest. All right. OK. Um, so modesty is cool. Um, so if we are talking about uh, any subject, anything, it doesn't matter what your reputation is. But if, if we're talking about something that we should all be on common ground with, and common ground means that we all come from the same place, of you know, no, even if even if we're not all really equal, or some are more equal than others, we're all equal, right? So, um, if you have to start off every sentence with, back in you know, with some historic time, in some historic place, I was the first whatever to do some historic thing, then probably what you have to say that's going to follow that isn't that important. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and the hoax of credentials. Um, OK. So trying to judge uh, intellect by credentials is like trying to judge maturity by age. Right? So I, I, I've known some 16 and 18-year-olds that are super mature, and some 45 and 50-year-olds that are the opposite. And I've known people with lots of credentials that doesn't mean a thing. Right? So. Uh, Credentials are great for some things, and you, and you need them on your wall if you're a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. But if you have to show everybody your credentials, then probably what you're doing is not that great. So don't be creepy. OK. So you, you didn't think there'd be a whole section on don't be creepy, did you? <laughs> OK. So um, it's a lot like dating. Um, so I know that you know, but please don't mention it. So. We, we hate it. It's out there. You, you're on uh, whatever site, and you're looking at something to buy at B&H, and you buy it. And then for the next week or month or however long, every time you go to Facebook, there it is, that thing that you already bought. How does Facebook know you bought it? I don't know. They just know, right? So if I send you an email, if I send you a promo, and you open it, and if I use MailChimp or um, Emma or Constant Contact, I know that you opened it. I know that you clicked through to my website. I know all those details. However, and, and you know that I know, right? However, if I call you up and say, hey, I see you clicked through to my website and looked at four pages, that's creepy. We all know that you know. We all know that we know who opened our emails and who look, click, clicked through, but please don't mention it. Don't ever call a client because of that. Pretend you're calling everybody even if you're not. If you call a client because they went to your website, great, fine. But don't ever say, I see that you went to my website. It's just creepy, right? It's like, hey, I know where you live. Now, maybe I do know where you live because you live down the block and I saw you go in your house. But you know, you don't have to say it. OK. Um, so uh, it's a, not OK to invite yourself. Uh, I mean, that, you know, that, that's actually uh, an old trick that a lot of newbies used to do. They go and just show up, right? So don't just show up. Um, and don't just invite yourself. But say, you know, it, and, and even to a client's office, hey, can I come see you? 
you might be able to get away with that. But if you say, I know this thing is going on, I want to be there, <laughs> that's different, right? Um, but you can always ask somebody out for coffee. You can say, hey, can I buy you a coffee? Can I buy you something, you know? And coffee is it. Um, I actually, I, so I had a photographer that wanted to meet with me, and I said, sure, you know, we could have coffee. Okay, great. And, he, and it, oh, I said, we could have coffee. He actually wrote back, um, I don't drink coffee. How about dinner? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, that's too far, right? No thanks. Dinner is after, after I meet you for coffee a bunch of times, and then we have lunch maybe one time, and we go and do some activity, get, maybe then we can have dinner. But no, no thanks on the dinner. Um, so <laughs> Um, oh, actually, that is the last slide. Okay, I, I, how do I get back to that? Let's see. There's a lot on Don't Be Creepy, but oh, I might have screwed that up. Okay. Um, now, what if he said, I don't drink coffee, let's grab a quick bite? Would you have the same thing? Would no, that, that probably would have been fine. I, you know, that's not really an excuse for, I don't drink coffee doesn't mean there's nothing in Starbucks that you can have, right? <laughs> There's something there. There's, they serve water. You can sit with me and have a water in Starbucks. A bite actually is still a little too far. I might have done it. I, if someone said, hey, you know, how about a, a quick bite? Maybe. I was just thinking that probably, that could have been something a somatic. It may not have been as creepy as you interpreted. No, no, it was dinner. So if, <laughs> I don't drink coffee. I, I know people that, that have emailed back, oh, I drink tea. I don't care what you drink. I, that wasn't the point. I wasn't asking you specifically to have coffee. What I was asking you to do is meet somewhere casual where we're not committed to any time and we can each walk away with our to-go cups. <laughs> Whether, where, it doesn't matter where that was or what it was. It, it's, and it's never about the coffee, right? It's not, oh, I, I really love coffee. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with meeting you on these casual terms. Dinner is really not casual. Lunch is slightly, it's in between. But I might have said okay to lunch, but I certainly wasn't oh, say, saying okay to dinner. Um, so ba yeah, back to the creepy thing. Um, so uh, a gallery owner that uh, that we know and who was here recently speaking, um, he uh, had uh, you know you have maybe one month or two months that are free. You have your regulars, your, the people that you represent. You have a group show, and you have a little bit to play with every year. So he saw this guy's work. He wanted to give him a show, and. Uh, everything was all set. All the guy had to do was say, okay, where do I send my stuff? How do you want it wrapped? Or details. All he had to do was get specifics. Instead, he said, I hope, uh, I, hope I put a spell on you. At which point, the gallery owner was no show. Uh, I don't want, and the gallery owner said, you know, I don't want him near my family, my dog, my house, my gallery. That's it. That's creepy. That's, that's, you've gone too far, right? And, and we're all, t we're, you know, we, we have a problem with opening our mouths and, and just going too far, right? We often, uh, I've gotten myself into trouble, we all get in our tr in ourselves into trouble, and sometimes all we have to do is shut up. <laughs> You know, if, if you're about to, ha everything's going fine for you, and that's, I mean, it's a sales thing. If you're, if you're selling something, closing, just as at one point, they're about to sign, don't start talking about other stuff. Don't, you know, just stop, shut up, let them talk, let them sign, let them, you know. Um, okay, so uh, it, it's great to be a resource, um, but here's some things not to do. So it, actually, this is not on being a resource, but um, one of the things that, uh, so when I was assisting, I recommended other assistants. We all networked, everybody knew everybody, and I was giving, um, when people would call up and I couldn't make it, I was happy to give work to this guy who had actually gotten me a bunch of jobs, and I knew he needed the work, and I recommended him to somebody that I had assisted for a lot. And they said he was the worst assistant they ever had. And this is, um, so it wasn't just that he needed to be told every single thing, you know, instead of anticipating or saying, oh, you're doing this, I'll do this with you, kind of thing, whatever. Um, this is what, act, what they actually remembered. He helped them pack, uh, I, I think he might have even gotten there late and didn't help, or they started early and he didn't help them pack the car. But anyway, let's say he helped them pack the car. There wasn't enough room in the SUV for, the third, for he, him being the third person. So they asked him to meet them at the clients by subway. Took him a long time, maybe not his fault, maybe the subway was just slow that day, but um, by the time he got there, they had unloaded everything, everything was already in the client's place, he was ready to go in, 
And instead of just saying nothing and possibly billing them later or asking them at the end of the day or waiting for like lunch when money is going around, right when he gets there, as everything has already been carried in for him, um, he put his hand out and said, two dollars please. That's how long ago it was. The subway was two dollars. Um, <laughs> Now, yes, they owe you the two dollars. Put it in your invoice. Do whatever. You, you know, at the time, you were probably he was probably making two hundred and fifty dollars for the day. It's a little less than the current uh, assistant prices. Um, so yes, two dollars is not much in that, but maybe he really needed the two dollars. Whatever it is, I have no problem with asking for the two dollars. But if you get there and that's your thing, two dollars, please. There's a problem. <laughs> So don't do that. Um, and then if you are the person that recommends that, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I recommended him to other people that thought he was fine. The, the other thing with the fish is uh, if you're copying someone else's work, just don't put it anywhere. That, and we, we did mention that, or I did mention that. Um, I have no problem with learning how to do some, lighting the way ex exactly the way someone else does. Copying an image, I, I ask my students to copy an image exactly. You know, make this as close as you possibly can. Use the same colors, the same you know, similar-looking model. You know, whatever. It copy. You know, it, it make this exactly. Make this exact thing. But then that's still a copy of someone else's image. You can't. You know, painters do it all the time. Students go to museums and draw and paint other people's work. That's fine. But then don't put it off as your own. Don't say, hey, I did this. And um, it's not just clients that ask for that. I've seen um, when I was a student, uh, another photographer, he, had a, he was opening a, to a page in a magazine saying, we need to do this. And then all of a sudden, I, then I saw it on his website and in his book. And I was like, we, that was that girl's work that, you know, that was in that article. Uh, some people don't care. But I say, if you go and show somebody something and it looks too similar to someone else's, uh, you know, that, that's a problem. Um, so that was the back to the fish. So, um, all right, we are actually doing, I'm, I, I talk really fast. Uh, so so we're, we're ending it now. I'm, I'm, I, I know I have to say that. Uh, we're ending it now, and uh, thank you very much. Thanks to uh, B&H Event Space, and uh, thank you, Deb, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.